one way to understand what's going on with the elements is to take a look at periodic trends. As we talked about earlier in this chapter, the Hog Hotel from last chapter has sort of been rearranged. And so what we had as the first floor of the Hog Hotel is this first row. What we had as the second floor is the second row. What we had as the third floor is this third row. And so what they've done is they've reorganized the rooms in our hotel to figure out what we most commonly would call the periodic table. And so if you take a look at that, you can see the periodic table has a way to label all the different rooms in the hotel. And the big challenge people have is, you mean that there's just 92 electrons? No. It means that every element of this, number one, has one electron. Every element of this, which would be potassium, has 19 electrons. And so the periodic table is one of the best cheat sheets ever organized. Another way to take a look at periodic trends is to make graphs like this. And here you can see that in order for something to melt or turn from a solid to a liquid, hydrogen and helium are gases and it's very, very cold in terms of degrees Celsius. These elements, beryllium, boron, and carbon, melt at pretty high temperatures. This is lovely, but it doesn't tell us as much about the periodic table as we might want to know. Not everyone is comfortable with looking at these types of graphs. This is often shown as a way to look at periodic trends. Here you can see that as I go across the periodic table, the 3D height of the Legos gets shorter as I go from left to right, or it gets bigger as I go from right to left. As I go down the periodic table, you can see these 3D Lego stacks, that's what this model is supposed to be, gets bigger. Electron affinity, or how badly something wants to keep an electron, gets higher over on this right side. We call this right side the non-metals. And how easily something will give up an electron is called ionization energy. These two trends, electron affinity and ionization energy, are related and are talked about in great detail on this test. Here's what you need to know. Fluorine, because that's this purple Lego stack, hates to give up electrons. It's also unwilling to share with others. So fluorine has a very high ionization energy. It doesn't want to give up electrons. And fluorine has a very high electron affinity. It wants to get electrons. You can think of fluorine as an electron addict. The sh sheet that Miss C was trying to show you tries to combine all of these trends in one sheet. As you go down the periodic table, the atoms get bigger. As you go across the periodic table from left to right, it gets smaller. As you go from right to left, or backwards of the way that we read, atoms get bigger. Ionization energy and electron affinity both get biggest at the element fluorine, which is on this part of the periodic table. 